Amphibians, a major crucial part of developmental biology for CSI Net Life Science exam. Well, today's topic is the discussion from uh, previous year question papers, the important questions along with the solution and we are going to talk about amphibian development. Let's dig in. The first question is from CSI, uh, CSI June 2021 exam where they are asking about the gastrulation process and also about the abscess development. The question says, gastrulation begins with the invagination of bottle cells followed by coordinated involution of the mesodermal precursors and the epiboli of the prospective ectoderm. So in this statement, in all the statements, they are asking for the correct statement. Well, let's first look about the uh, in the gastrulation part, what's, what takes place in amphibian, right? This is what is, a, what is the blastula uh, structure of an amphibian embryo, okay? Now, the gastrulation starts from the dorsal side. That means the prospective dorsal side. Uh, dorsal means the back side of the organism. Basically, from this embryo, this part of the embryo is going to form the back side of organism. Whereas, the front part of the embryo is going to form the, uh, means this part will form the front part of the organism. It is called as the ventral side, right? Now, the gastrulation process, it starts with internal cell rearrangements which propel the cells of dorsal floor of blastocele towards the animal cap. Now, animal cap, animal side is the top top portion, vegetal side is the bottom portion. The part of the embryo where the blastocele is present or the cavity is present, that is called, that side of the embryo is called as the uh, animal hemisphere or the animal half and the other half is called as the vegetal hemisphere, which is mainly having the yolk content, right? Now, from here, the gastrulation will start and uh, after that, you can see the cells, they are moving this side towards the animal pole. So, slowly and slowly, they are moving towards the animal cap. They will be spreading towards it. Now, there are several movements which are involved in this one. First of all, it will be the uh, invagination after which the cells will migrate as a layer. Invagination is just the forcing of a layer inside there will be a push for the layer to go inside involution will be where the where the cells are migrating as a layer towards the inside so the entire mesoderm will involute in the region of the gray crescent cells then they will be uh, invaginating inside and finally there will be convergent extension okay convergent extension means there will be a thicker layer slowly it will become a thinner layer because cells will migrate uh, in one direction, they will converge in one direction and they will uh, increase in another direction. So, it will become a thinner layer but a more elongated layer. So, whenever we have the embryo, the layer of cells are involuting like this. Initially, there is a thick layer, okay. But later, it will converge and it will become a thin layer. So, while this happens, the outer layer of cells, they will cover up the entire embryo, which is called as the process of epiboli. So, epiboli will be for the uh, build, uh, co covering of the entire embryo by the prospective ectoderm. So, actually, this is the true statement. Now, next, uh, statements are asking, organizer induces the mucop center. Organizer is formed by the accumulation of beta-catenin. And in absence of BMP inhibitor, ectodermal cells from neural tube. So, for this, you need to know a little bit about the axis formation. First of all, uh, beta catenin is a very important component for axis specification. Whichever side of the embryo beta catenin is present, that side is uh, specified to form the dorsal side. Why is that so? Because beta catenin uh, gives rise to the expression of another protein called as nodal. So, nodal related proteins will be high and wherever this vegetal section is there of the embryo, so there you will have the expression of the proteins like VEGT and VEG1 which are TGF beta type of factors. Now, in the segment like for example in this segment, you have both TGF beta factors and you also have beta catenin. So, wherever you find both of this at that particular section, there will be some molecule activation which will give rise to the organizer. So, this region is called as the nucoop center. The cells will give some signal on top and it will make the organizer over here, right? And wherever you have only TGF beta but no beta catenin, 
So here the cells will give a regular uh, signal not to form organizer. So they will form the different mesoderms. Okay, ventral mesoderm, ventral um, uh, that intermediate mesoderm, but not the dorsal mesoderm because dorsal mesoderm will form only from this side. Correct. So whenever it is said that organizer induces the nucleus center, it is the other way around. Just now I said nucleus center induces the organizer. So that's why two will be wrong. Organizer is formed by accumulation of beta catenin. No, the nucleus center is formed by the accumulation of beta catenin. Wherever the beta catenin and TGF beta is there, there the nucleus center will be formed, and uh, it is because of the accumulation of the beta catenin. And this is wrong. In this absence of BMP inhibitor, ectodermal cells will form neural tube. Now, first of all, you should know that wherever this organizer is there, it will secrete some molecules called as BMP inhibitors. The names of such BMP inhibitors are Nogin, Folistatin, Cordin, I will come to all those things. So, these are all released at the dorsal side. Now, dorsal side means the, the ectoderm is, uh, is supposed to form the neural tube. Okay, neural tube in the dorsal side ectoderm. But in the ventral side, you have some signaling called as BMP signaling. Fine. And BMP will try to convert the ectoderm into epithelial cells. In fact, this BMP will try to convert the dorsal side ectoderm into also epithelial cells. But the BMP inhibitors released from the organizer will not allow it to do so. Okay, so BMP inhibitors will inhibit the BMP signaling and the ectoderm will be able to form the neural tube. Now what it is said here in absence of BMP inhibitor, ectodermal cells form neural tube. No, if BMP inhibitors are not there, then BMP will make the ectoderm into epithelial cells, not neural tube. So it is only in the presence of BMP inhibitor that the dorsal ectodermal cells can be made into neural tube. So even this is wrong. The first uh, statement is the correct answer. Well, these are all Part C questions that we are discussing over here. Now, coming towards the June 2017, uh, it's an old one, but uh, still this concept is uh, asked in later, latest exams also. The presence of beta catenin in the nucleus of blastomeres in the dorsal portion of amphion embryo is one of the determinants for laying down the dorsoventral axis. What will be the outcome of expressing a dominant negative form of GSK3 in the ventral cells of early embryo? So there are two parts to understand and answer this question correctly. First thing is how the dorsal ventral axis is formed, which we have already understood by the presence of beta catenin. But they are not asking in a normal embryo. They are asking in a mutant embryo where you have overexpressed, uh, means you have expressed a dominant negative form of GSK3. Here, the concept of genetics also is required. Like dominant negative form means this is inactive. So basically, GSK is not present. To tell in simple terms, in the ventral cells of early embryo, GSK is not present. In that embryo, what will be the outcome? That's what they are asking. Okay. So, let me talk about this GSK a little bit. I have already told you about the uh, dorsal side that beta catenin is present over there. You have to know the beta catenin signaling for this particular part. Okay, now beta catenin signaling it is received by a frizzled receptor which is present in the cell membrane, and uh, the beta catenin ligand is the WNT ligand, right? Frizzled receptor will be activating a protein called as disheveled, which short form is DSH. DSH will be inhibiting a complex. The complex is GSK APC kinase complex. So, this complex DSH will be inhibiting. Now, this complex role was to bind beta catenin and lead it to degradation. By the way, if you don't know, beta catenin is a transcription factor which should enter the nucleus in order to activate the transcription or regulate gene expression. But if GSK APC is present, then it will bind beta catenin and degrade it. Beta catenin will not be free to enter nucleus. Only if there is WNT signaling, then only GSK can be inhibited through this DSH and then only beta catenin will be free. Because if uh, the GSK APC is not there, beta catenin will be free. It will be free to enter the nucleus. 
so basically if we have gsk if we have gsk and it is not inhibited then beta catenin cannot be free that's the entire logic so you can see in an embryo you have the part the dorsal part where the wnt signaling is present and that is why dsh is activated and that's why it inhibits gsk3 so in the dorsal part gsk3 is inactive and that's why in the dorsal part beta catenin is stable got it but in the ventral side in a normal embryo now this i am telling you in a normal embryo the ventral side of the normal embryo doesn't have beta wnt signaling okay so wnt signaling comes only in the dorsal side in the course of cortical rotation in amphibian after fertilization i'm not going into that part so basically in the ventral side of a normal embryo you don't have the wnt signaling now wnt signaling means dsh is not activated and that is why gsk will be active over here it will bind beta catenin and degrade it and that is why in the ventral side beta catenin will not be present now what did i tell you we have to correlate with the axis formation that wherever beta catenin is there and tgf beta is there so this common part is called as nucup center which gives rise to organizer on top of it and organizer specializes or specifies the dorsal side so basically beta catenin is required to induce an axis in the organism okay it will induce the axis in the organism now the question is asking if you take an embryo in which in the ventral cells of the embryo you have non functional gsk okay so this is what is the actual question then what will happen now see they have not mentioned anything about the dorsal side which means the dorsal side will be wild type dorsal side cells that means here gsk anyways will be inhibited by the wnt signaling pathway so beta catenin will be present and it will induce a axis in the dorsal side okay so this this process is not touched uh, it is undisturbed so it will be normal but in the ventral side where gsk is supposed to be present but in this mutant one it is not present so it will give the same result as this dorsal side because here also gsk is not present so beta catenin is free so here in the ventral side also if you don't have gsk then beta cat will be free in this side also that's why in this side also axis will be formed okay so the correct answer to this is a secondary axis will be formed okay what will be the outcome of expressing a dominant negative form then in the ventral side also an axis formation will be seen got it moving on to the next question again from june 2021 uh, the early development in amphibians and aves so this is in chicks serve as two different model plans of development in the former the germ layer formation is initiated from a fluid filled ball like blastula while in the later the germ layer formation is initiated on a flat blastodis so this type of comparison questions are also common in csir here they have compared the uh, embryonic development in both amphibians and chicks okay so they have given two component two columns in which some components of the blastula and the gastrula are given and their uh, similar parts in case of avians okay but it is not in the correct order so what you have to do is you have to match the correct ones together okay so in this uh, question you have to first see what is the uh, what is the gastrulation and the parts in amphibian anyways this all we have just discussed over here the part from which the gastrulation starts that is the blastopore and the dorsal side of it looks like a lip that's why it is called as dorsal lip of blastopore so dorsal lip of blastopore is the main part from where gastrulation is initiated right and in avians you have this um, this parts where uh, where only a part of the egg is getting cleaved so entire entire egg will not get cleaved this is the top section of the egg which is shown since the avian eggs are telolecithal they have a lot of yolk content so only a small portion at the top they will get cleaved fine now this is the top portion as you can see from here the gastrulation begins migrates and it starts with something which is called as a primitive streak 
right primitive streak is the start from where the gastrulation uh, means from where it will be seen right and uh, as the cells are migrating you can see the primitive streak is getting elongated right now the tip portion of the primitive streak it is called as a henson's node it is present at the most anterior part so wherever the streak is originating that will later form the posterior part and the, wherever it will end up towards the front it will be the anterior part so the anterior part of the streak it is a bit thickened at the anterior end of the primitive streak is a regional thickening of cells called the primitive knot or which is called as the Henson's node. Now Henson's node is very important because it acts as the organizer. From here some cells will go inside and migrate towards the anterior side and the anterior portions they will be specified by this Henson's node. So same thing is done by amphibian organizer as I told you they will specify the dorsal side of ectoderm uh, ectoderm dorsal fate and even the mesoderm dorsal fate so that's why henson's node is the functional equivalent of the dorsal lip of amphibian blastopore that is the organizer okay so same thing in fish we have embryonic shield even in zebra fish also so that's why three will correspond c will correspond to three right now i told you that as the cells converge through the primitive streak then uh, they are forming a depression over here. So this is what is called as a primitive groove. You can see a gap is created, right? So this is a gap for the cells to go inside. This is called as a primitive groove. And it serves as an opening through which migrating cells can pass into the blastocele. So actually bottom of it is the blastocele. You are not able to see it. This is the entire egg and this is the blastula part. So blastocele is actually below the part which you are able to see now. So you can compare it with the amphibian dorsal lip of blast, uh, you can compare it with the blastopore which is uh, the primitive groove in case of avians, the primitive groove is analogous to the amphibian blastopore in this case, okay. Now coming to the um, posterior marginal zones, so posterior marginal zones are present towards the posterior end obviously uh, around uh, towards here. And the reason why posterior marginal zones are important because they contain some cells that will initiate the gastrulation process. So what you can say is that posterior marginal zone cells act as the equivalent of the amphibian nucleus center because the organizer is initiated or it is uh, signaled by the nucleus center. Similarly, posterior marginal zones are going to signal uh, the gastrulation to start from here. The two-layered blastoderm, epiblast and hypoblast is joined together at the margin of the area opaca. The part where you can see uh, the cells are present here, the central part is opaque. Uh, central part is actually transparent. So you can see through it, okay? Whereas the peripheral part is actually opaque, where you are not able to see through the, uh, through the blastula. And the space between the layers, it forms a blastocele. So that's the part between the epiblast and hypoblast where blastocele is there. In amphibian, blastocele is present right here. So A will be corresponding to 4, right? So um, if you want to study about such contrasting details, because as I said in development, not only for axis formation, uh, even you have this neurulation, it is compared between chicks and mammals, even fertilization. So there are a lot of processes which you have to study in developmental biology in uh, standard model organisms. If you want to compare them, then concept table book of Biotechnica will be very helpful to you. As you can see here, they have given all the detailed points about the axis formation in birds and, and the uh, amphibians. All the important details, uh, all the terms like noggin, cordain, or even primitive streak or Henson's node, right? So all this collar, sickle, posterior, marginal zone, all the details they are mentioned very properly in this particular uh, book. And uh, this will help you recollect in the exams better, okay? So that's why here the correct answer will be option 2, right? So that's all for now. Do let me know in the comment section which topic of developmental biology you want me to discuss next for this series. Thank you everyone.